Good evening and welcome to this, our Ash Wednesday service. Ash Wednesday marks the beginning of our Lenten journey, allowing us to recenter ourselves and return to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believe in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. Let us confess together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon your sins and set you free from them, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We will say the collect together. Almighty and holy God, your Son in obedience to the Spirit, fasted forty days in the desert, Give us grace so to discipline ourselves that we would press on towards Easter with eager faith and love through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Listen to the good news as it is proclaimed in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others, to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So, when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honoured by others. Truly, I tell you, you have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting but only to your Father who is unseen. And your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Friends, Ash Wednesday, for many of us, it is a day, a moment, a service that for a very long time in our lives have been a part of. And so we are so used to what this is supposed to mean and what we are supposed to be doing. To the extent that some of us just see it as any other day, except that we'll get some ashes on our foreheads. This year, it is different. And perhaps it is different for a reason, because it gives us an opportunity to think through what we are actually doing. That it is, is it really just about having ashes on our forehead, or it is an opportunity to think through our relationship with God. We are called by the church, to the church, back to Jesus Christ to refocus ourselves and make new decisions for our faith. Yes, the reading focuses on fasting and giving. But the questions we need to be asking ourselves is not whether or not we are going to fast privately, or we're going to pray privately, or we're going to give privately. But the question we should be asking is why do we do those things? Because often we tell people how to fast, we tell people how to pray, we tell people that they should be generous in their giving and not boast about it without getting to the core of why we do these things. So this Ash Wednesday and the Lenten period we are about to get into offers us that opportunity of reflection. These things we do 
are meant as a celebration of the relationship we have with Jesus Christ. It is all about Jesus. It is Jesus saying the ability you have to pray, the need for you to fast, and the gifts I have given you to give to others are about me. So when I ask you to do these things, when you pray, when you fast, when you give, think on me, think on Jesus and not the glory that it brings to you. Not what it just does for you, but what it does to your relationship with your creator. These are acts meant to enhance our relationship with Jesus, not meant to celebrate our ability to do those things to the world. And so it is important that in this season, given the circumstances that we find ourselves in, think through what you are just about to do. You will have the privilege to do the imposition yourself at home. Think through what you are just about to do. It's not just somebody putting some dirt on you. It is you, one, admitting that you are human, you are mortal. But in your mortality, you are very aware that there is Jesus who will transform your mortal body into immortality because in the acts that you will perform in land, you are doing it for him. And so we commit ourselves in those ashes back to that Jesus Christ who will enable us to do these things that might seem impossible because we are so challenged. But if it is about him, it is possible to celebrate what is supposed to be a very dreary period. So we are celebrating in repentance. Imagine that. So not only are we sad about it, but we celebrate that we are already forgiven, but in being forgiven, we are empowered to be able to do these things. So what we are going to do this season, and I hope we are going to do quite a lot of things differently, even through the courses that we will have during this Lenten period, it is our, our celebration in saying we are sorry, pardon us, but it's a celebration that even before we said sorry, we were forgiven. Before we could perform any act of goodness, Jesus had already empowered us. Focus on Jesus, because it is he who is able to take us through this land, to that journey that we'll celebrate when we get to Easter. with ashes, merciful God, mark us and make us your
Dear friends in Christ, at the Christian Passover, we celebrate year by year our redemption through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Since early days, the church has kept the season of Lent as a time of preparation for Easter. We begin Lent by remembering the need for repentance. So let us ask God our Father to bless these ashes to our use. They have been made from the palms with which we greeted Christ our King with joy last Palm Sunday. They are a sign that we mean to prepare ourselves with penitence for Easter. Let us pray. Lord, bless these ashes to our use and grant that they may remind us of our mortality and of our need of repentance so that we may keep Lent faithfully in preparation for the joy of Easter. We ask this in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Now you can take this time to imposition ashes onto your family's foreheads. Turn away from sin and believe the good news. Amen. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Return to the Lord with all your hearts. Leave the past in ashes, and turn to God with tears and fasting, for he is slow to anger and ready to forgive. Lord Jesus, think on me and purge away my sin from earthborn passion set me free and make me pure within Lord Jesus, think on me The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Worship and praise belong to you, maker of light and darkness. Your wisdom draws beauty from chaos, brings a harvest out of sorrow, calls out to those who have lost their way, and leads them safely home. God of grace and glory, you made us, you seek and find us. We are the Lord. In Christ your Son, enemies are reconciled, debts forgiven, and strangers are made welcome. Your Spirit frees us to live as sons and daughters, secure in your family. 
we who by Christ's power seek to follow the way of the cross, sharing the joy of Christ's obedience, now offer our praise with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, sing the hymn of unending glory. Thanksgiving up yours, most loving and gracious God, for Jesus Christ, in whom the world is reconciled. He is the Lamb of God, who takes away sins and gathers us into the abundant new life of your forgiveness. Through Christ's dark struggle, death is swallowed up in victory. Christ, the firstborn, freely offered himself as the Passover Lamb for the sins of the whole world. By his loving sacrifice, he institutes the reign of eternal light and abundant life. By his blood, he reconciles us. By his wounds, we are healed. Before he was given up for suffering and death, at a meal recalling the night of Israel's Passover release, Jesus took bread and offered you thanks he broke it and gave it to his friends, saying, Take, eat, this is my body. It is broken for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, he took the cup. Again, he offered you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all, that all sin may be forgiven. Do this to remember me. We now obey the Son's command. We recall Christ's passion and death. We celebrate Christ's resurrection. We look for the coming of Christ. Made one with him, we offer you these gifts. With them we offer ourselves a symbol for the living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon the bread and wine we offer, that overshadowed by his life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your Son, by your grace, open our ears to hear you calling us home. Arose in our hearts the desire to return to you and kindle within us the fire of love that renews for the service of Christ's kingdom. Help, Help us, us to live and work to your praise and glory. Make us grow together in unity and love until at last your creation is renewed and restored. Then bring us to Mary, the mother of our Lord, and all the hosts of heaven, 
to our true eternal home, where we may praise you forever. Risen Lord, to be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be to you, Lord of all ages, world without end. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. God's mercy endures forever. Let us remember that Lent is a time of reflection, a time to recenter yourself and return to God. Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice. In Jesus Christ our Lord, send us out into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit, to live and work to your praise and glory. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So remain in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, Amen. Surely you alone can heal us. Yours is the will to make us whole. Soothing with a mother's kindness, the contrite of heart you console.